Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say with shouts of hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. What a great and mighty God we serve. Amen. Well, friends, today is August the 21st in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I'm so delighted that you're with us this morning, ready again for the word of God, and may his spirit speak to your hearts and minds as we take a look at his word. Our text is going to be found in John chapter 17, and we're going to pick up in verse 6. Now, yesterday we started a mini-series, if you would, on the Lord's Prayer. And as we discussed, the Lord's Prayer is actually contained within this chapter. And as you read it and study it, you will better understand what it is that I'm talking about. In verse 6, Jesus picks up or continues in what he has been praying and he's, and he's talking to the Father, and he says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Now, these men are the disciples, specifically the disciples. And so he says, I've manifested your name unto them. I've revealed you unto them. Do you remember when Jesus said, no man knows the Father only those whom I, the Lord Jesus, reveal him unto? Well, that's what he's saying here. He's saying, I have revealed you unto these 12, and they were thine, but you gave them unto me, and they have kept thy word. So long before Jesus came on the scene, they belonged to the Father. Why? Because as Jesus said in verse 2, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given them. The Father has pre-selected many to be his followers. But according to this passage and others, some have not been chosen. And so he says here, they belonged to you and you gave them unto me so that I could teach them. I could train them in your word and they have kept what I have trained them. Now, friends, in some mysterious act of grace that transcends the human capability of understanding, God chose us before we were in our mother's wombs. He marked us. And as Jonah, we can run to the ends of the earth, trying to get away from his will, rejecting him and attempting to live our own lives in the way that we so choose. But we have been marked. And even if we do seek those other ways of living, we're not going to be at peace because we are fighting against a supernatural act that has marked us and chosen us for the kingdom. And as you and I understand, when you and I fight against the hand of God, we may appear to be having a good time in the world in front of others, but deep in our soul, we know something's wrong. Why? because we have been chosen and we are fighting against what we have been chosen for. And that creates an unhappiness in the heart of those who have been chosen that can only be settled by surrendering to the God whom has chose us. I hope that hasn't confused you. Well, let's continue on. He says, I've manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So they understand that Jesus is a mediator between God the Father and men. And very few at this time understood that. But they understand that. And he says, I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. How blessed and privileged we are, friends, to have the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and parts of Acts recording for us the words of Jesus. How different our life would be if these had been lost, if they had been destroyed. But we are privileged to be able to open up our Bibles in the privacy of our home, in the public setting of a park, and read the written words of the Messiah, the recorded words of Jesus of Nazareth. And so he says, I've given unto them the words which you gave me, 
and we could put in parentheses there they have recorded my words so that other generations might learn also and he continues they have received them and they have known surely that i came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me so they accepted jesus as the messiah as god the father in the flesh they understood the promises of the old testament the prophecies of the old testament and how Jesus fulfills each and every one of them. And so now in verse 9, he says, I pray for them. I pray for these, my disciples. I pray not for the world. This prayer is specifically and exclusively for those who are going to carry the message of Jesus out into the world. But he's not praying for the world here. He's praying for the 12 disciples. And so he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but I pray for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all of mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Why? Because they are lights in a dark world. I, Jesus, am glorified in them because as they live their lives on this earth, they're going to live it as a representation as if I were in the earth today. So they're going to be seen as little Jesuses walking around on earth. Because as Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so it is with us. If people look at us and see us, they see Jesus. That's what a follower of Jesus is all about. He continues in verse 10. He says, all mine are thine and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. So Jesus is about to leave earth but the disciples are going to remain to carry on his work with the power, the direction, the leading, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit whom Jesus is going to send back to accompany and comfort these disciples. He says, I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. So Jesus is going back to the Father. He says, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one, in perfect agreement, in perfect unity, in perfect doctrine, in perfect faith. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, I have protected, I have taught, I have shepherded them, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. He's speaking here of Judas. Judas was lost from the 12, but it was according to the scripture. And so he says in verse 13, now I come to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. When they wake up from this day forward, I want them to wake up with the same spirit alive and active within them that was alive and active within me when I walked the earth. The same spirit that brought me such joy, I want that same joy to be within them. Friends, are you experiencing that joy? Because if not, you're being robbed of a blessing that Jesus has promised that you should walk in. He says in verse 14, I've given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Their message contradicts that of the world. And because of this, the world will hate them, will seek to kill them, just as it did me. So I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world so that they should escape this persecution, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil, protect them, give them the strength, the courage, the wisdom, the love, the forgiveness, to forego these times of suffering so that Jesus will be seen in their lives and that the Father will be glorified by doing so. He continues in verse 17, sanctify them, make them holy, make them pure, make them separate, sanctify them through thy truth. Open their eyes to the truth. Let them see the difference between the kingdom and the world that they live in. And let them dedicate themselves to live consecrated, holy lives while they live in such an evil and dark world. Why? Because thy word is truth. After you have sent me into the world, 
even so have I sent them into the world. So Jesus came with a very specific mission, and that was to bring this message from the Father to a world who had been so confused and so deceived. And Jesus says, just as you, Father, have sent me into the world to perform this mission, now I send them into the world to carry on that same mission. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Now, friends, there's a lot going on here. But what we need to take from this is that Jesus came with a message for a lost and dying world. But when he left this earth, his work was not finished. He anoints us. He empowers us. He charges us to take that same message to all those who would hear in the world that we live in. And so may each of us be faithful to living that out. And where we need to start is simply opening our eyes and looking for those, listening to those whom are seeking the truth. Because if we are very observant with our eyes and our ears, we will find those who are seeking truth. They are out there, but we must be still and allow ourselves to be directed by the Holy Spirit so that we can minister to them in their time of need. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you are here today. It is such a blessing to bring you the Word of God each and every day. And I trust that it is changing you, conforming you, rebuking you, correcting you, shaping you, molding you into the image of your Savior, of your Messiah, of your God, of your King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as He wills, and until next time, friends, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.